bubble thinking is comfortable but dangerous. I, I've told you before, I've created a bubble intentionally in my own life. I don't want to live around scumbags. I don't want to live around, around communists. I've done all these things before. So I'm in blood red Texas. I only hire blood red people to work with me. And I'm only friends with those types of people. But there's a danger in that. You don't talk to any normal people. Selena Zito does. She is my friend. She's probably the best journalist in the country, to be honest with you. SelenaZito.com is where you can find her work. And she travels the Rust Belt, swing states. She, she's in diners. She's in bed and breakfast. She's talking to people. So let's see what Selena has to say about the election. Selena, you walk into these cafes. I, I vote on much different things than these people do. Why do these people vote the way they vote, however they're voting? Well, you know, people vote, I think this is largely missed. They vote about their pocketbook. They vote about their family's future, you know, and, 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 and their family's ability to be prosperous. And part of prosperity for people that live in the middle of the country doesn't have anything to do with making a lot of money. It has to do with the ability to stay connected to family. Do you live down the street from your from your parents or your grandparents? That has value that um, that I think a lot of journalists miss. They don't understand that that could be more important than working in a larger city and making more money, right? And and so safety and security; those are all driving reasons in this election cycle, and and. It, it, that always is, but what party is taking you to a better place is the one that's winning that argument. And right now, that is the Republican Party. The Republican Party looks very, very different from when I was younger. Um, it was more the country club, the free traders, right? Um, internationalism. That's not the case anymore. The Republican Party has become, even though it has a, still retains its conservative tenets, uh, it is also the party now of work. People that work for a living, people that you know get their hands dirty or have trade skills or artisans. Uh, that I will argue that the person that ends up deciding this election, this cycle, will be the waitress that waits on you where you go to, to have dinner, the welder, the plumber that fixes your house, the HVAC, that is where the, the movement of this country right now and the movement of this race. Okay, so let's pause on that for a moment. I actually wanna go back to journalists and journalism. You said that's the thing they miss. Why, what is it with that field in general? And I realize there are some good ones, not many, but. What is it with that field? How do they miss that? Are journalists, and I'm not talking down about anybody who has money, are they all rich kids? Like, what, what is it? Are they, do they have broken families? Is that, what is it about journalists where they don't see that and feel that? Well, part of the larger problem is as smaller newspapers die off, people that used to cover you that sat in the same pew with you in church or, you know, coached your kids Little League, as those entities have diminished, the rise of the national press has had more dominance in what we read. And the problem with that is, it's not that they are bad people, it's just that they don't know the people they are now tasked with reporting on. They often live in the 10 super zip codes, 10 most wealthiest, um, counties that are also the center of power in New York, in Washington, and in California. And so they don't know and understand the people that they're reporting on. So when they go to report in a place like where I live in Western Pennsylvania, it's very foreign and different to them. And they don't know how to relate to it, but also write about it in a way that doesn't make them look like they're freaks. Okay, so let's let's move to the Kamala Harris voter because let's be honest, it's Lord willing not going to be fifty percent, but it's going to be close to half the country. They're going to go vote for Kamala Harris, and there are people in these swing states, many of them, who will vote for Kamala Harris. Why? What drives them? I don't talk to these people. So, 
a lot of why they are voting for Harris is, uh, is twofold. First of all, there are what you call yellow dog Democrats, where they will vote for a Democrat no matter what. There is a portion of that. But there are also are a lot of people who have benefited under Trump's policies in his previous administration, but dislike him so vehemently that they will vote against him. So it's not as though they are voting for her. It is vote as though they were voting against him. So what does this tell me as a journalist? It tells me that this country is more center-right than we understand. That that it had, if it were not for Trump on the top of the ticket for some people, they would be voting for a Republican and likely will vote and split their tickets in local elections and maybe even the Senate or governor's race. So, uh, you know, that, that, is, that is her problem, is that she is pulling like a generic Democrat. So the votes for her um, that go oh, that that hover near fifty percent are actually votes against Trump because there are people who do not like his comportment. Okay, so th- I was going to ask, what is it about Donald Trump they dislike? I mean, I mean personality-wise, I realize he's a strong personality, so it's not as if there's a shortage of things that that people may chafe on. What is it? Is it the name calling? Is it what is that? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's a little bit of that, but also my profession has done an extraordinary job of demonizing him, of of making him out to be this bad guy, right? Like there's the bad guy and the good boy, good guy, and they have made him out to be the bad guy. Um, and for intellectual elites, that that makes them feel superior, and and they're voting. Um, justly because they're voting against the bad guy, even if they're voting against their own self-interest. And look, there's not a person that I don't know, that you don't know, that probably all of your listening audience doesn't know that is a wisecracking real estate developer that they have been on the golf course with or sat in the stands with their kids at baseball or whatever they've, they've known them in their lives. And mostly... They like them because they're characters, and, but they also know they come from a good place and, and that their rough edges are just part of them being characters. Not that they are deeply, deeply evil. They just have flaws the way the rest of us do. Selena, you were at that rally in Butler where Donald Trump almost got his head blown off. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the national media has tried to move on from that for understandable reasons. But has that resonated in Pennsylvania? Is there a sense of anger, embarrassment, sadness? What, what do you? What sense do you get from people there about that? So you probably don't see it because you're not in Pennsylvania, but it has had a profound effect on people because it has made them take a look at this race in a very different way. And, and made them take a look at him, but also the incompetence of government that he has been talking about for eight years and, and makes them rethink, well, maybe he had a point. Maybe we should restructure things. Maybe we should you know, start from scratch. And, and so uh, if, if he wins Pennsylvania on election night, which is he is trending to do right now, it will have a lot to do with different layers of impact that, um, that he has had, that moment has had on the psyche of the state. That's interesting. Okay, we don't talk much about Wisconsin and Michigan, and I think a lot of that is because the Trump campaign is very clearly focused on Pennsylvania. They think they win the Sun Belt, they win Pennsylvania, he's the president, and they're not wrong about that. But Michigan, Wisconsin, he might break those off? Oh, no, I don't think he's written those off at all. And I think that they understand if Pennsylvania, if they win Pennsylvania, they're more than likely winning Michigan and Wisconsin as well because Pennsylvania is just a scooch more Democrat than those two states are. 
How about that? Selena, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. I would thank you for coming to my YouTube channel, but I know how brilliant it is, and I know you love it here. So subscribe and watch. We're going to start really ramping things up and putting some funny stuff, some interesting stuff out there, some collaborations. Either way, my YouTube channel is officially the place to be. So stick around.